Wednesday night, we talked about the keys to the kingdom, and, and I believe that God is speaking to us about this because there is a place that he's taking us, and if you don't have your keys, you can't get in. If you think the key is being Baptist, <laughs> if you think the key is being not just Pentecostal, but apostolic Pentecostal, not just Presbyterian. <laughs> it's, it has nothing to do with that. You have keys, and I'm afraid sometimes that we've overlooked our keys. And that's what I think God wants to talk to us about today, is we need to unlock it. Look at your neighbor and say, unlock it. Unlock it. Matthew 16, 19 says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind or lock on earth shall be bound or locked in heaven and whatsoever thou shalt loose or unlock on earth shall be loosed or unlocked in heaven should have already been in other words it will be the moment you do it it's already done in heaven the moment you decree it you're in heaven decreeing it so it's done there first and then it's coming to earth that's what I say invoke the kingdom when you invoke the kingdom of God you're no longer in Bellevue you're in heaven. You're in the throne room. An ambassador. The Bible says if, if, you, if, you, if you would um, declare something, you decree something, it shall be established. That word decree also means, and I've said it a couple of times now, it also means legislate. So you begin to write the law. God expects us to write the law in the kingdom. You can write the law. So if you lock cancer out of the kingdom, in heaven then it's locked out on earth it's only going listen it, if you're not in the kingdom this don't apply or if you lost your keys whoo help us Lord mm -hmm. hey look God don't give you no fob <laughs> beep beep <laughs> beep uh uh you better have a key whoo have you ever needed to go somewhere, but you couldn't find your car keys? <laughs> you still have the authority to drive the car. Nothing has changed in the ownership. It's still titled to you. You still have your insurance on it. Your ownership is not in question. The power of that car under the hood is not what's in question. You still got the power. You still have the storehouse, which is the trunk. Come on. You got it all, but you lost your keys. What you don't have is now is the ability to operate what you've got the authority to operate. Oh, help me, Jesus. I feel like I'm preaching to one side. I'm not picking on y'all. There just ain't nobody sitting on me. <laughs> but for TV, I'll be doing this too, because y'all can't see that. <laughs> There you go. Woo. You still got the authority to drive it. Nothing's changed, but you just lost your keys. You know the direction that you need to go. You know what time you need to be there, and you know what to do when you get there. But you lost your keys. And until you regain possession of your keys, you are locked out. No matter how great, no matter how awesome that vehicle is, you're locked out until you find a way to get your keys and get back in. Somebody says, well, not me. I got a Slim Jim. Yeah, that's John 10, 10. If you try to get in any other way, you're a thief and a robber. Listen, God didn't say, I'm going to give you all keys to the kingdom and a Slim Jim in the trunk, baby, so you can just jimmy that lock and jump right on in. No, you got to have the keys. You got to have the keys. It's time to unlock it today. And I think that's the word that God is sending us. Your kingdom keys represent your authority. Take a minute to think about your physical set of keys if you have one. What's on that key ring? Hmm. Think about it. Keys to your home. Keys to your office. Keys to your vehicle. The key to your safe. Notice with me that Jesus did not say, I will give you the key to 
to the kingdom. He didn't say, Peter, I'm going to give you the key to the kingdom. A lot of people preach it that way. And when I was doing my study, and I, I found several organizations that preach it that way. He, Peter had the key. Well, the Catholic Church believes that Peter had the key. That's why he was the first pope. Jehovah's Witness believe that Peter was given a key to, to open up the gospel to the, to the Jewish people, to the Greeks, and to the Gentiles. That was his keys. But Jesus didn't say that. He didn't say, I'm going to give you the key to the kingdom. He said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Come on now, let's, let's read the word. I'm, in Matthew 19, he said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. So in other words, if he's not just getting a key, he's getting keys. Kareem, if he's getting keys, then that means there's more than one thing that needs to be shut or open. If I'm getting keys, then I'm, I've got access to more than just the kingdom. See, God isn't talking about just getting you saved. Here's the key to the kingdom, and here's how you do it. Repent, be baptized, in Jesus' name, say the Holy Ghost, boom, boom, you're saved. That's not the key to the kingdom. Salvation already belongs to you. But he says, I will give you the keys, plural, to, of the kingdom. I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. It's important that we get that little, that little point. If the scripture had actually said he was given the key to the kingdom, I'd better understand why people would limit its meaning to entrance only. But if you look again at verse 19 of Matthew 16, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. And he says, of heaven. That's supernatural. And whatsoever thou shalt lock on earth shall be locked in heaven. Whatsoever you bind shall be bound. And whatsoever you loose shall be loose. Whatever you unlock shall be unlocked. So we're looking at the fact that, first of all, he said keys. You're getting more than one key because there's more than one thing to do in the kingdom. It tells me a lot when we look at this. You only need keys to gain or to bar access. Not just to enter into the kingdom, and I'm belaboring this for a, pur for a purpose, but to have authority to lock and unlock things after you enter the kingdom. After you've gotten in, then you're going to have the ability to lock and unlock. You're not limited to just entering the door and that's it. But you're equipped with keys because there will be things that you need to open and shut. I think I gave them to Angela just now, but my keys, <laughs> they have a car key and they have a house key and they have a gate key for the thrift store down there and there's a key to the old church still on there. Lord knows there's probably a key to the one before that, but there's keys on there, which gives me access to to. to operate in all of those functions because sometimes I need to go home and then there's time I need to get in the gate and then there's times I need to get in the box truck and then there's times I need to drive my car and all of those things are different areas of my life different giftings that I'm operating in sometimes I'm daddy okay sometimes I'm hubby sometimes I'm the manager sometimes I'm pastor and what I have to have a key to all of those things in my world. This is a physical thing I'm talking about. So the keys in your possession represent a right and a privilege that you have. They enable you to enter through a doorway into a secure area that other people cannot go through. Think about your car for a second. How many of y'all locked your car before you came in? All right, remember people watching on TV, right? <laughs> y'all locked your car. You know why? Why did you lock your car? Because people that are unauthorized might come get up in your car and do things in your car that will devalue your vehicle or even take your vehicle. See, they may, like a thief and a robber, come in in another way, start your engine and take off with your possessions. So there's times you have to lock what God has given you to keep the enemy away from taking things that belong to you. You can't just say, oh, no, it's mine. God gave it to me. Yeah, baby, he gave you a key. Lock that thing up. Don't let that just be some loose something out there just because you can do, you know, you can prophesy in church or whatever, like you were talking about. No, 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 no. That's some, you got to watch to keep the enemy from coming in. The enemy comes, how does he come in? He comes in with false doctrines. 
The moment somebody sees you worshiping God, they'll come in and say, uh, well, the Sabbath is really on a Saturday. <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. And we got all kinds of explanations. I'm not getting into all this. But they'll come and, that, and you'll be like, what are you talking about? So they can take you to the scripture and show you plainly. Sabbath's on Saturday. You know? And so and unless, unless you understand the scriptures and you understand Galatians when he says, who hath bewitched you? Who cast a spell on you and said, and said you can go back to how we were doing it before? Who, who, who did those things to you? Because in the Jewish religion and in many others, it is the Sabbath. It's still on, it's still on Saturday. But in Christianity, Christ rose on the first day of the week. And he did something that had never been done. The Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. So the Holy Ghost stepped in and took over the covenant. And the Holy Spirit of God raised him. He could have raised him any time he wanted to. And so that was the only purpose. But am I going to go to hell because I worship on Sunday and not on Saturday? No. Am I going to go to hell because I worship on Saturday and not on Sunday? No. No, that's just our different purposes because every day is a Sabbath in the new covenant. If you got into the kingdom, then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday are all Sabbath days. Every day is holy. See, that's what religion did whenever we got into religion. Sunday was a holy day. We didn't even cuss on Sunday, baby. No, because it's the Lord's day. But then Monday through Saturday, we live like hell. We live like hell. Then we brought our rabbit, turtle, and, and dove to the church on Sunday and come over here and sacrificed everything and looked holy and dressed just right. I done got off my message, but it's the truth. Because what happens is we start focusing on the wrong thing. The main thing is you got your keys. You got your keys. I don't care how beautiful your car is, you don't have any keys. And so if we get off track and off focus, somebody comes in and starts telling you something that takes you off focus, you ain't going to realize you got to lock that thing out. you got to lock that door. You have every right to believe what you feel like God is, is, is giving you. It don't always have to line up with your pulpit. It don't always have to line up with everybody on your road. But you ain't got to get up and boast. You ain't got to send me to hell because I don't believe like you. Come on, somebody. That's not what God's talking about. He, when, we get, when we start talking about the kingdom, all of that goes away. That's why I always make light of denomination. Nothing's really wrong with it other than the fact that if we're not careful, it becomes the focus. Now somebody's going to leave today and go, he don't believe in the Sabbath. It was on Saturday. That's not what I'm saying. Just making a point that you've got to be so careful not to be drawn away and enticed. You, you, the Bible says that the kingdom has given you authority and power. These are the words from him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. And then God said, I'm going to give these keys to you. So that means what you shut, no man can open. And what you open, no man can shut. Brother, you, you're just making me feel empowered. Good! It's time! You are empowered. You are anointed. You have authority over sickness and disease. You have authority over death and addiction. You have authority over all of these things. This is why I, I say what I do when we're dealing, with, we're dealing with different people and all of their things they're going through. If somebody doesn't want what you're trying to do for them, don't waste your time. Because it really is up to them to open up the lock. You can give them keys all day long. Here we go. I got me a lock. It's got an orange sticker on it, so it came from a, a pickup. That's <laughs> y'all's sticker. Man. All right, it's locked. But there's a key. Here's my key. Here's my lock. This is the deal. It's unlocked. It's that easy. It's that easy if you're willing to do it. But if you're out here working with somebody and they're all locked up. And so you run out there and you give them a meal. And you go out there and you put your arm around and you cry on their shoulder. And you hand them a key. And, and they locked and you give them the key to open that lock. And they're like, dude, say it is key for 10 cents so I can get another snort. Are you really doing anything? How we feel 
Oh, we feel great. We fed the hungry. We clothed the naked. Next week, we fed the same hungry and we clothed the same naked. Next week, we fed the same hungry and we clothed the same naked. And they asked me for different food because they didn't like what I brought them last week. Come on, somebody. No, no, no. There's, you got to learn when to, listen. Where's Kenny Rogers? You got to know when to hold them and you got to know when to fold them. You got to know when to walk away and you got to know when to run. Come on, somebody. You, <laughs> I'm preaching Kenny Rogers right now, Marie. That's how it is. But look, but look, it's that easy. You unlock it. If you give them the key and they take the key and they put it in the lock and they turn it, you've done something. But if you keep giving them the key and giving them the key and giving them the key, sometimes you got to turn and walk away. Why are you saying this, preacher? Because God has called us to a higher place where we have authority. And, if, and, and the thing is, they've got the same authority you got. And if you hand it to them and they don't use it for what you're giving it, stop wasting your time, baby. God will send somebody else. You just keep walking it out. You keep reaching somebody. One reason we don't see the church fill up is we're still dealing with the same old lame brains we've been dealing with for two years and three years. They're not coming. Go find somebody who needs to hear your words. Find somebody that will take what you're saying and, and, and look at you seriously. Listen, let's find somebody that are hungry and feed them. Find somebody that, listen, I told you the other day, when well, you go down there and find somebody, when, when somebody's broke, they don't tell everybody they broke. When somebody's really in need, you might be sitting right by them. They're not going to tell you. They're not going to hold up a sign. Uh-uh. They're not going to stand there and hold up a sign. Same person for three years on the same corner holding a sign. Had a same, you know, need, need money, have two-year-old. How long has your two-year-old been two? I've been looking at you three years. So, so you drive by and there's something in you going, I don't, I don't want to do that. Don't think that's not Christian. That's just common sense. Because the person that's, that's really broke, the Holy Ghost will show you who they are. They may be sitting in their car at the gas pump, wondering if they can either put gas in the car or pick up some hot dogs so the kids can eat tonight. But I got to have both. And you pull up and God says, throw a $100 bill in that window right there. Come on, somebody. That is when God is using you. Drop your $100. You don't just walk up here like... Like you're on a catwalk. No. You put... When you give here... I mean, please don't stop giving. But when you give here, it does a certain thing. But listen, you've got discernment because that person out there is not advertising. I use that example when the garbage man come by. They didn't pay their garbage bill because they couldn't. And their garbage got left on the street. And the whole neighborhood's of garbage all gone. And they're like, oh, get those cans and pull them in real quick. <laughs> must, must have missed us today. They don't get out and go, we don't have any money. Couldn't pay for our garbage. Please, somebody pay for our garbage. That ain't how it works. It's important that we unlock and we lock. It's important that we open and shut the door. There's a time that comes you got to shut a door on some things. You got to shut a door on some things and open the door on other things. Whew. Somebody got to say it, so I'm going to be the one. <laughs> in the Bible, especially in the New Covenant, keys are symbolic of authority and power. They're a metaphor for spiritual authority. The kingdom of God is the realm of God's rule. According to God's promise, we have the weight of the kingdom authority behind us. I'm giving you... I'm giving you, who somebody, I'm giving, yeah, take them. I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom, all of them. In other words, I'm going away, <laughs> and I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus rose from the dead, and he declared all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth, Matthew 28, 18. He has that authority, the ultimate key holder. Is Christ. He gives us his keys of authority and says, use these keys in my name. Mm, y'all know y'all lost y'all keys. Don't be messing around losing Jesus' keys. <laughs> the keys are your right in any given moment to release the power of God so that his will is accomplished. You have a right to release the will of God. 
You have the key. Listen, well, is it God's will to heal? People teach all, all of these series on God's will to heal. I would be insulted if I were God. He sent his son to die on a cross. He bought healing and salvation on the same invoice. He paid it all with his own blood. And you ask him, is it your will to heal? If it's your will, God, please heal him. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, it's his will. And he gave you a key. If you'll unlock the door and, and, uh, or put a lock on the door of disease. Come on, somebody. That's why we decree a cancer-free zone. Yeah. Pastor, you got to be careful saying that, man. You might get cancer. Shut up, devil. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. It's a cancer-free zone. Why is it a zone? Because we locked it out of other places. Everywhere we have authority, there's no cancer. Come on. Come on. you got to understand, that's your authority. And you haven't ever really been taught, the, I'm not saying that about everybody in here, but there are those who have never really been taught their full authority, your full measure of authority. Because it makes, oh, can I go ahead and finish saying that? It makes intimidated pastors feel more intimidated when somebody has a gift or an authority out in the pew. But if pastors would learn to celebrate gifts instead of squelch the gift, then people would learn to be equipped and begin to operate in the call of God on their life. Listen, if somebody gets out of control, we know how to snatch them up. But let them get out of control first. Let them do what God's calling them. They don't have to know all the answers all the time. Do what God said do. Do what God said do. Hallelujah. We use physical keys to access the property by taking those keys in our hands and inserting them into a lock. But spiritual keys are primarily used by our mouth, by what we say. A key is useless when we neglect to use it or we forget what it's for on the key ring. You can have kingdom authority available to you, but yet you never use it. And if you haven't been using your keys that God gave you, you may not even remember what they go to. You may know all this stuff about God. You can quote scriptures and you can, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, all the way down. Just run it. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum. And then you keep going. I don't even remember the next one. But I'll just tell you, we can do that. That don't mean anything. I'm just rattling my keys. But what's it for? Oh, come on, somebody. What's it for? You can tell me how many times you've been to church, how long you live for God, all the great things. But well, what's it for? How many people have been converted? How many people have been changed? How many miracles have you wrought by the powerful hand of God through your life? How many times have you put the key in the lock and turned it? How many times Satan tried to come in, you just locked him out? He can't get in. And you don't walk in fear, you walk in faith because you locked the door and you know that he cannot penetrate that lock. Woo! Woo! Keys and turn doors are unlocked as we to make declarations and prophetic decrees. We're unlocking doors and we're turning keys. Prophetic decrees are kingdom legislation. They're enacted by binding and loosing. As you decree a thing, angels are doing in heaven what you are decreeing on earth. Oh, you're making it the law of the kingdom. Whew. Pastor, you find a way to say the same thing a different way. That's because I'm trying to get it into us. I say it as many ways as I can figure out how to say it. But the truth of the matter is, God has given you keys of the kingdom of God. There are things you have power and access to that is powerful and anointed. And guess what? It's not Baptist or Methodist. It don't fit what you grew up in. But if you'll just explore a little bit, ah, hallelujah. Do it when the preacher's not looking. But you explore a little bit and you can turn that lock and you can open up locks that they told you only the church could open. Ha. Ah. They told you only by coming to church and giving a big offering, well, that's going to break off of you. The devil is a liar, baby. You got the key. Look at your neighbor and say, you got the key. It's unlocked. It's that easy. It's that easy. It's that easy. Whew. The enemy tries to lock us into belief systems. He locks us into to ideas of disease and sickness. 
and, and this is just part of what I've got to do. I'm just getting older. I'm just going through this. I'm just, I'm facing this now because this happened whenever I was this age. I got in a car wreck when I was that age and something happened in my legs. So I can expect to have to limp the rest of my life. The devil is a liar. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for medicines. Thank God for what they're doing. But let me say to you, there is one realm beyond the medical profession. And that is the Holy Ghost of God. And I promise you that God can step on the scene. And if you'll use your key, he'll unlock doors for you. He'll open things up. He'll lock things out of your body. Cancer wants to come, but it can't. It's locked up in a faith room somewhere because you said it's a cancer-free zone. And because you said it, it has to happen. Whew. There are things that you lock because you don't want others gaining access because they have no business in that area. If you allow the enemy into your health, he may steal your health and shorten your life. Sometimes you don't have to allow them in. They'll break in. Ooh. <laughs> Hallelujah. But that's whenever you take your authority. That's when you take your authority in your rightful place and you begin to open up with your mouth. And that mouth is a key, friend. And what you're coming out of that mouth is keys. It's either locking things or it's unlocking things. Sometimes your mouth locks things that you don't need locked. Sometimes your mouth unlocks things that's been locked up. It was going to hurt you. And then you run, run your mouth and it unlocks the door. And you've been bragging about how it's all been locked up. But you got over there talking smack and you unlock the door with your words. And suddenly you find yourself under attack and all this stuff's happening. It's like, oh, he's testing my faith. No, you unlock the door. You let those rascals out. Come on, somebody. we got to put it back. Just nudge him once I put it back. Say, so he's preaching to you, put it back. <laughs> now you're mad at your neighbor. Just kidding. <laughs> Whew. As a person in authority, you got to keep those things locked that should be locked and those things open that should be open. The kingdom's no different. God has placed certain things under lock and key to preserve it for you. But he's giving you the keys of understanding today so you can unlock it and access the things that have been prepared for you. God locks some blessings up so other people wouldn't take your blessing. How many of you know people will steal your blessing if you will let them? Whew. Isaiah 45 and 3 says, And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Who treasures of darkness. Sometimes when we walk in darkness, we start rebuking the darkness. But God has you walking through some dark places because there's treasures. And other people wouldn't go for fear of the dark. But you were willing to walk through some dark places. And as you walk through them, it may, it may feel like some symptoms, some things going on. But let me tell you today, keep walking because there's treasures in the darkness. And God's about to reveal some things to you. And you're going to see some things come to light that you had never even considered before. I know your deeds. I've placed before you an open door that no man can shut, Revelations 3. And in the New Testament, Paul uses imagery of open and closed doors to speak about opportunities to minister the gospel. This door opened and this door closed and we were not able to preach. An open door is a metaphor for an opportunity, an access. And a closed door means that access to something is currently being denied or blocked. When God has given you a promise or a directive, you can be sure that he's also given you keys of authority to enter that domain. God's not going to tell you to be healed and not give you the authority to do it. Come on now. Whoo. Y'all preach to myself. I preach myself happy. I'm going to buy my own tape. <laughs> Come by to tell somebody, including myself today. If you've been locked out of your authority and blessings way too long, God has come by to say, unlock it. Unlock it. Unlock it, somebody. Unlock it. Hallelujah. I'll give you the keys or the authority of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind or forbid, declare to be improper and unlawful on earth, will have already been bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, permit, declare lawful on earth, will have already been loosed in heaven. In the Amplified Version. In order to use the keys of the kingdom, 
We must comprehend that our Father has called us to partner with Him to enforce His will on earth. Some of us got caught up in the fire escape mentality, and all we could think about is rapture. I think it's funny. Every time we get a little turmoil in the economy, Facebook goes crazy with rapture videos and rapture posts and rapture and God's coming back and it's, you know, eschatology and whatever. And really? No. That's not, that's not the case. You know, I believe he's coming soon, but I don't believe he's coming in my lifetime. Pastor, you ain't supposed to say that. You're supposed to scare the hell out of everybody and tell them he's coming tonight. No, isn't that the truth? He's coming tonight. Oh, oh, I think I heard a trumpet. Oh, oh, he's getting close. Oh, no. He's coming soon, brother. I grew up having it scared out of me. Every time we had a, a, a major service and they would end with, if I don't see you before the next service, Godspeed. See you there or in the air. <laughs> I got news for you. You're going to know when he's coming back. He's talking about, well, nobody knows the day nor the hour. And that was true. But I'm going to tell you something. If you've got the Holy Spirit, you're going to know it. I'm just telling you, you're gonna, you are going to know it. Holy Ghost is going to quicken. If that spirit that dwelled in Christ dwells in you, he'll quicken your mortal body. Don't tell me Jesus didn't know it when he was getting raised. Come on, somebody. You're going to know. You're going to feel it, and you're going to know it, and it's not going to have to be something you scare somebody with. I'm not looking for signs of his return. Hallelujah. I look for him. I await that glorious day. I think it's wonderful. I, you know, my eyes are on the prize. I think it's wonderful. But I've also got keys, and I've got an assignment, and I don't want to leave behind an unfinished task. The last thing I want to do is stand before the throne and say, I left behind an unfinished task because I didn't like Joe Biden, and so I started preaching that the rapture was coming. That's how silly we get sometimes, y'all. We've got to understand it has not, nothing to do with politics. They can shape it a little bit. They can make it look this way. Most of them plan it to make you think that's what they're doing. Oh, that's the mark of the beast. No, it's not. It's a credit card. It's a key fob. It's not the mark of the beast. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, I'll clean all that up later. Let's get on back to our sermon. Hmm. God has delegated his authority to you. And I, I, I like having you look at your neighbor because I, I keep your attention. But look at him and say, I got authority. Look back at him and say, I'm a little bit special. <laughs> I'm authorized. Come on, it's true. He, God has delegated his authority to you to allow or disallow what he's allowing and disallowing. Think about that for a minute. Is there something that you're allowing right now and the Holy Ghost is putting his finger on it and saying, that's not my will. And you don't have a right to give that thing permission to operate in your life. You're allowing it. And the Holy Ghost is saying, that isn't me. I'm not allowing this. I'm not allowing sickness in your body to teach you a lesson. That's a lie from hell. I did not beat my son to a bloody pulp so you wouldn't have to have sickness and then put something on you to allow you. He said, I will not put the sicknesses upon you. I won't put on you what I put on Egypt. I won't put it on you. I didn't do that. Stop saying I did that. If it takes, if it takes God backing up his own word, if it takes God backsliding from what he promised to get you to learn something, he ain't going to let you learn it because God can't change. Because when God says it, it becomes true. So you try to pacify your heart by saying, well, God's teaching me something. No, baby, he teaches you through the Holy Ghost. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. I was looking in the Bible. Brother Art, I read all I could try to find where God came down on the day of Pentecost and made a bunch of them sick. He wanted to teach them something. That isn't what I read. Uh-uh. He said, you need to get in one mind and one accord, and one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, 
and it sat upon each of them. People don't preach that anymore either, but they saw fire. Sandra, they saw fire. Mm. And they all began to speak with tongues. Mm. And, and the Bible doesn't say, and he taught them something through their sickness. We got to lose this. We got to get that off of, we got to lock that up somewhere. Somebody has unlocked that, and it's a false nomer that has come into the body of Christ, and it's accepted. You may have learned something through a sickness, but that wasn't God that taught you through the sickness. You learned it because you were too stubborn to listen to the Holy Ghost. Or either you were at a place where they didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. But I've come by to tell you today, I'm relieving you of a lot of junk that the Christianity has put on us. You have authority. Walk in it. Walk in it. Well, it ain't you feeling the pain. No, but I still have the same authority to tell that pain to get out of my body. And you do too. Say it. Say it. Come into agreement with somebody because sometimes your faith is overwhelmed by what you're feeling. So somebody else who's on the outside can point at that thing and say, get out of her body. Get out of his body. Turn. Leave. Lock it up. And unlock healing. Whew. You got to lock it out. Are you allowing something that God didn't put in there? You can lock out cancer. You can lock out divorce. You can lock out poverty. Whatsoever you lock will be locked. He didn't say as long as your organization believes in it. He said make something up. Whatever you want to lock, lock it. And I'll lock it in heaven. Whatever you want to loose, loose it and I'll loose it in heaven. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Here's the keys. Whatever. Oh, if we could only get that in our mind. That God has given us a blank check. And you made it out for $10. You thought he'd be proud of you. And God wanted you to just run out of zeros. Just keep writing on the table. Whoo, somebody. Am I going too long? Do I need to stop? We need to hear this. Remember, you don't have to use the terms binding and loosing in order to exercise your authority. You know, the church, we pick these things. I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. I pray that way too. But you don't have to do that. All you got to do is put the key in there and turn it. You either lock it or you unlock it. I lock this thing up. I lock cancer out of my life. I bind this from happening. Angels are scurrying to do it in heaven. The Bible says in Luke, he sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. No power and no door that holds somebody captive, whether physical or spiritual, can stand against the keys of heaven. In the context of spiritual warfare, binding refers to the authority we have to command a demonic influence to stop or cease activity or to leave in Jesus' name. Loosing has to do with what we're permitted, permitting and releasing in the name of Jesus. We can also loose a person from a demonic bondage or sickness. Luke 13, 16 says, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, Oh, i got to preach now. I know it's long. I, I, listen, I ain't apologizing, though. Satan has bound this woman. God didn't put it on anybody to teach him something. Satan put it on her. 18 years she went around thinking that she had to have this. And she's a daughter of Abraham. And Jesus said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these 18 years to be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Here we are again getting caught up with the Sabbath and Jesus is trying to heal an 18-year affliction. But we're so jacked up because he did it on the Sabbath that we're not even showing the compassion to the woman or our freedom to unlock her because we're doing it on the wrong day. We often have surrendered or yielded our keys to the devil by our words. The Bible says Jesus descended into hell and took the keys from the devil. I'm going to give you something right here as I close. Hmm. Jesus descended into hell. <laughs> See, nobody preaches Jesus went to hell. But he went to hell. 
He didn't go for punishment. He went to hell with authority. And he descended into hell. And he didn't go to hell just to lead the captivity out, just to set people. He went to hell to recover the keys. Somebody got to get it. Jesus went to hell and he said, give me the keys back. Kareem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Woo! Jesus walks into hell. The first person he saw was probably the last person to die. Judas is carried. He jumped and his bowels gushed out. And you know what he said? Hello, friend. I've come to bring you out. I've come to unlock you. Everybody puts Judas in hell. But if you read in Revelation, 80 years after the fact, they're writing the foundations. And the name of the foundations lists the name of the apostles. When it gets to the 12th foundation, which is the foundation that, that was called Judas, <laughs> it's called Amethyst. And the Amethyst stone, the meaning of that is one who gets it all back. One who is restored. Oh, yeah, they wrote about him in hindsight's 2020. You know, he's a son of perdition. He's that one that portrayed Jesus. It's Judas Iscariot and all this stuff. But whenever they, whenever they listed the apostles 80 years in Matthew afterwards, they didn't put Matthias. They put Judas. <laughs> so he descends into hell. He sees all of those reject all those who rejected him. You see, because there's mercy and grace behind the cross too. You got to understand. Get out of our theology for a second, and understand that Jesus didn't come to just save the cross forward and to hell with everybody else. No, he came and he set people free from the cross backwards. He led captivity captive. And you know what happened? When there was a great cloud of witnesses that they saw him rise. You know who that was? That was the people that he led out of hell. That was the people that had gathered around him that got a second chance. He is the son of a second chance. He's the one that will help you overcome when you think you've fallen too far. When you've been dead too long. When you made too big of a mistake. Unlock it. Unlock it. Unlock it. He went into hell and he said, give me the keys of death and hell. Art, Jesus got the keys to hell. You can't go to hell unless Jesus opens the door for you. He's got the keys to death and hell. You're going to have to walk up and reject him. I know we've heard the fiery sermons and all this stuff. And God's going, I'm coming after you. I'm going to kick you off in hell. Oh, no, no, no. You better understand the love of God. Whew. I'm, not, I'm not preaching that ain't nobody going to hell. Because we've got a whole world full of them headed that way on a jet ski to hell right now. But I promise you, the guy who's got the keys to hell, Christ. I would rather the key to hell be in his hand than the devil's hands. Come on, somebody. You don't know what happens after you give your last breath here. We think we do. We got our little theologies. Oh, but you got to go through Jesus to get to hell. Whew. You got to, he's got to unlock the door. Hmm. This woman, Satan bound this woman 18 years. Then we talked about that, the fact that whenever this woman who was bound by the devil... And I, and I left this point that I wanted to make that oftentimes we get things happening in our life that we allow Satan to do because what he did was he took your keys from you, he hid your keys, and then he locked you in a room. And you didn't think you had any way out. The whole time you had the authority over that whole thing. All you needed was to get your keys back. So let me make this point. Sometimes you've got to step into your own hell. Some of y'all going through some hell. And you just want God to get you out of it. Sometimes you got to go into hell, look it right in the face, and say, give me my keys back. Give me my keys. Because I've carried this pain too long. I've been addicted too 
long. I'm not going to let this happen. I'm taking my keys back. I'm not asking God to do it for me. He's already done it for me. I'm getting my keys and I'm going to unlock this thing. Woo! Ah. Woo! Oh, yeah. Loosing is unlocking. Many have received keys to the kingdom, but they've never unlocked anything. Today we're unlocking it. Today we're unlocking it. Look at somebody and say, we're unlocking this. Uh, well, I'm not going to be sick anymore. I'm not going to be broke anymore. I'm not going to be addicted anymore. I'm not going to have this loneliness anymore. I'm not going to be this, this it, situation that I've been in anymore. I'm locking it out and I'm unlocking my success. Woo! Many times in the last few sermons, I've talked about the lame man at the gate. But I felt today like I need to tell this one more time. There are many truths to discover about the guy sitting at the gate. After passing him by for years, this day was different. Something had happened to the apostles. Jesus even passed this man by and didn't heal him. The apostles had been giving money to him. He had been lame at the gate his whole life. But this day was different. This is why I can tell you that today is different. You're not going home the way you came. Whew. You probably sang this growing up with me. I will not go the way I came in Jesus' name. I won't be bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. I will not go the way I came in Jesus' name. <laughs> Whew, that needs to be our, our cry today. Today it's different. Today it's different. It's not a progressive miracle. It's going to happen right now before you walk out the door. God's unlocking something in your life. I'm almost finished. Two more sentences, but let me tell you, I hear the locks clicking. I hear them clicking. All you got to do is turn the key. Turn the key. Turn the key. Stop asking God to do it. Stop believing God. Somebody said, you say stop believing God? Let me tell you what I meant. I'm all locked up, God. I need your help. You ask God for an oak tree, he gives you an acorn. You ask him to get you out of a locked up situation, he gives you the key. Thank you, God. My God is so good to me. He gave me the key. But I'm believing you, God. In the name of Jesus, I've been fasting for three days that you're going to unlock this lock. Come into agreement with me right now. Come on, lay your hand on that lock with me right now. Come on, sis. He shut the box. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to run from prophet to prophet, from prophet to prophet. Oh, oh, come on, prophet. Oh, she's powerful. Oh, I felt that. Still locked. Come on, Matthew. Oh, still locked. Still locked. Debbie. Thank God. Thank God Debbie Adams came in today because I know she's got a lock anointing. Hallelujah. Touch that lock for me, sister. in your hand the keys in your hand when I say stop believing God I'm not talking about stop believing God believing God I'm talking about stop using that as an excuse to not get your miracle because God says here it's that easy I had it the whole time I got it I, I didn't get any of it by chasing people around buying books tapes you know following people do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. You, you, know, you can't do it. I still can't do it. You know why? Because I got my key and I'm not putting it in the lock. And it's as simple as that right there. It's all done. It's done. How many times are you going to make that point, brother, until we get it? <laughs> and when somebody gets it and they're like, oh, my God. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, somebody going to drive up here in a shiny new ride because now you're going to understand. All you had to do is turn the Woo. Hallelujah. Somebody receive it. Receive it. Mm. Closing. I even wrote the word in here. Closing. That way 
you know, if I read it, I'm not lying. <laughs> Just kidding. What is in your life? Now, this is, the, this is the crux of the whole thing. We're done. I'm going to get out of your way. We're going to go get some chicken or something. He died that we might live. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is it in your life that you have learned to live with? You've accepted it's God's will for me. This is what I've got to go. This is my cross to bear. This is my burden to carry. If you make your voice tremble just right, you'll really sound anointed. I, I've got to carry this thing because God put it on me. You know, people fall for that stuff. They, you just breathe in a microphone, people will be like, oh. <laughs> I seen it happen one night at a big old meeting. The preacher goes, Poof! and everybody went out. Like, bro, he breathed in the mic. It didn't come out the speakers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's your faith. What area have you been locked up and unable to accept the complete fulfillment of God? I'm about to hand you the check. And all you got to do is write on it. What do you need right now? What is it you're believing God for? You don't even have to tell other people. What vice have you had to endure because there has never been a time when you felt like you could break free from this? You've actually created a theory that it's in your DNA, that it's a bloodline iniquity, that it's something that had to have come because you never have been able to get completely free. But today is going to be different. We're unlocking it today. I feel this in, in the heavens, y'all. I'm telling you right now. What treasure has been just inside the room in front of you, but you can't ever quite gain entry? You've come to the window. You know it's your room. You know it's been promised. You see it in there. You're not doubting, but you can't get in. What area, Allah, by side, in your life, are you that close, but you can't why get there? You're believing God. You're thinking of every sermon you've ever heard preached. You're trying to do whatever the preacher said. And all you got to do is take that key and speak it out. Mm. Some people have settled for less while crying out for more. And I've come by today to let you know it's time to unlock it. You've been given the power and authority. You've got the keys. It's time to unlock it. God is encouraging you right now. Turn the key and push the door. Whew. Who's going to do it today? Turn the key and push the door. Whatsoever you bind or lock is bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose or unlock on earth shall be loosed or unlocked in heaven heaven when it happens in heaven the devil has to leave you alone as long as it, heaven hasn't said it the devil don't have to do it but when you realize that you've been given the keys to heaven the authority the ambassadorship and now you decree a thing in the heavens and every words established so now when you step into the throne room and you say it you don't have to hope it happens you don't have to say, oh, it's a powerful church over there, man, they believe. It isn't about that. It was you. You said it, and God did it. Oh, Jesus. Don't be left outside today when you should be inside. Let's stand together. Unlock that constraint. The key is in your proverbial hand, which is your voice. Open up your mouth and speak the key, for it is within your words that you bind and you loose. You're made in the image of God and in His likeness. You're like Him with his words he unlocked the light he unlocked the darkness he bound some things 
bound. The Bible said God set a bound. He said the waters could come here, but they could go no further. And he created the beach. Come on, somebody. Let there be light. Let there be relationship. Let there be freedom from addiction. Let there be happiness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. For this is the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace, and joy. What is it that you're standing there looking at through the window? You've shared it with others. You've told them about it. You can see it. It's developing right before your eyes, but you don't have access. I'm here to tell you, you do have access. Speak it out. Open it up. Unlock it. Jesus. The Spirit of God is saying today that you're not going to die of this disease. You're not going to die. Unlock your healing. You're not going to file bankruptcy or go broke again. Unlock prosperity onto your life. Unlock it. Jesus, Jesus, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you want to lock, I will lock. Whatever you want to unlock, I will unlock. This is your day. Somebody, this is your day. Hallelujah. You're watching me by way of media right now. This is your day. This is your day in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit of God, I release a fresh anointing. Transcend the camera lens and time and distance right into your room right now. Holy Ghost and fire appear in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that addiction off of you right now in Jesus' name. I feel like there's somebody watching. You'll get a testimony. You're at the end of your rope. You were done today. You were done today. What you don't understand is just the old you is done. God's raising up the new you. Put the pill bottle down. Get up from where you're at. Lift up your hands and receive Christ into your life right now. Jesus name. Holy Ghost, fall now in Jesus name. Woo. Fresh enough. Yeah, contact somebody. Somebody close to you and somebody here. Let us know what God just did, did in your life. Is there somebody named Darren that's watching you right now? some mistakes you paid the price for it and you found the mountain that you had to climb when you got out too steep God is telling you today he's given you keys stop listening to the voices of family of friends of all these advice that you're getting right now and turn to God turn to him alone God's going to take you on a journey, Darren, and you're going to find your way in Him. And in the name of Jesus, from this day forward, your life will never be the same. It will never be the same. Jesus.
there's such an anointing right now rushing through this place. I don't care if there's only one of you, but if just one of you will turn that key, I dare you to turn that key. <laughs> People aren't even going to recognize you. They're not even going to recognize you. won't recognize yourself a year from now. God's going to take you so many places, do so much for you. Jesus. There's an anointing in this place to turn keys and unlock locks right now. Who's ready? Who's ready to walk out of that situation? Who's ready right now? Who? Can anybody else feel that anointing? Can you feel that? Somebody's on the cusp. You're on the threshold of never being the same. And when you realize what these keys go to, the devil's going to wish he would have never came against you. Whew. When you realize it, once you get the door unlocked, sit inside the car put that key in the ignition and turn it there's your power there's a key to power there's a key to the locks there's a key to the storage there's a key to all that it offers your transition your transportation your ability to flow and move it's all on that ring Receive it right now. Watching me at my TV, receive it right now. Just put, I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. Just put it in there right now. Hallelujah. Receive it. Somebody take that.